It's 11.30 p.m. and I'm making my nightly rounds, making sure all the doors are locked before I start my nightly cleaning routine. I'm a janitor at one of the many Gold's gyms. This Gold's gym is hidden from the road enough to where the doors aren't too visible from the highway. I won't lie, it creeps me out sometimes working here alone until 3 a.m., so I always bring headphones to listen to music. I also make sure to leave all the lights on and have weapons hidden in each room as I clean. I'm minding my own business mopping the main floor by the front desk and getting ready to turn my music on. That's when I hear loud banging on the glass. I look up and see nothing. I feel chills. The windows show nothing but a pitch black night sky. I shake my head and go to press play, but then more banging. This time, it's louder. I run to the front of the gym to see a man. He's pressed against the window staring at me. He's dressed in a hoodie and sweatpants. He looks to be in his 30s. His eyes look bloodshot like he is exhausted. Sorry, we're closed, I say nervously. I try to show I'm not scared, but my heart is pounding a little fast. I left my gym shoes, he says flatly. You'll have to come back tomorrow, I say. He stands there and doesn't say anything. Moments go by and I feel like an idiot just standing there. A creepy smirk creeps across his face. Have a good night, he says a little too happily. He walks off into the darkness. I shake my head and tell myself to calm down. I decide it's best to not play music. I need to make sure this man really left. I, being a man myself, know I'm a pretty strong guy, but this guy looked built. It honestly freaks me out. I start cleaning again. There is nothing to be- I hear a loud bang come from the back of the gym. I feel my breath catch in my throat. I hear it again, louder this time. I take deep breaths as I reach for my mace. I slowly make my way to the back door. I hear a constant banging as I grow closer. The back door is solid metal and sturdy. I know it's locked, but I can see the vibrations with each bang. What makes it even creepier is I swear I hear snarling and growling. I put my hand on the door and hold the mace up with my other. Just then, the banging stops. G go away or I'll call the police. I manage to choke out. <laughs> I hear a man's laugh. They can't save you. He groans. I run away from the door as quickly as I can to the manager's office. I lock myself into the room and grab my cell phone to dial 911. Just as it starts ringing, the power to the gym goes off. I let out a huge gasp. 911, what's the emergency? Please, help me. S -s Someone is trying to break into the gym. I hear glass shatter. I think you just broke in. Okay, sir, I need you to stay calm. Where are you located? As I start to reply, I hear footsteps outside the door. I get down behind the desk next to me. 4123 Southern Plaza off Brook Road. Okay, sir, just stay on the line. Cops are on their way. I start to reply when laughter comes from the <laughs> other side of the door. I can smell you. You smell scared. I gulp. Sweat is pouring down my forehead. Sir, are you there? Yes. <laughs> the cops won't make it by the time I get through this door. Please, y you can take anything you want. Just leave me alone. I yell, trying to sound non-frightened. I grip the mace close to me and look around for a weapon in case I have to fight. You know, you're right. I think I will let this be a warning. When you least expect it, I will find you, and I will come for you. It could be at your house in the quiet neighborhood, the place where you go to play cards every Friday, or here, where you're all alone every night, six days a week. I catch my breath as I realize this man has to be stalking me. Uh, who are you? I yell. <laughs> The man laughs devilishly. You'll see in time. I hear footsteps getting fainter. Then I hear cop sirens in the background. I hang up the cell phone. I don't come out from under the desk until a cop busts down the door. When they lead me out, I see the front windows shattered. I tell them everything and they take it all down. They suggest that I go nowhere alone and always have a weapon on me. I proceeded to take it a step further. I now have moved, changed jobs, and my weekly routine. I will take no chances. Lately though, 
I swear I'm hearing howling and evil laughter from the woods by my new place. I'm considering relocating again. <laughs> Pizza Hut has been one of the best and worst jobs I've ever had. I'll start with the reasons why it's good before jumping right into the bad stuff. It's going to make explaining what happened to me last night a lot easier if you know a little backstory. For a business that constantly reminds me how cheap it is, it pays me well enough as an assistant manager. The work is typically repetitive and simple and my days there usually melt together as it's more or less the same routine every day. Deal with customers, make the pizzas and wings, call the Pepsi company and complain our order is late for the third time in a row. There's the odd time when things get tense though. We get angry complaining customers every few days, but every workplace that deals with customer service gets those. Thankfully it never usually takes more than a free pizza or credit on their next order to make them happy again. For the past 11 months, I have been the restaurant's main closer. My shifts never change from 4 to 11 or 4 to 12 on Fridays and Saturdays. Once in a while I'll get scheduled for a 10 to 6 or 11 to 7 shift if one of our openers is sick, but that's pretty rare. However, it does happen. Since I live in such a small town, my Pizza Hut only deals with takeout and delivery orders. There's no dining area at all except a couple bar tables and stools by the main entrance for people to wait for their order. The front lobby of the restaurant is tiny and the kitchen is no exception. The entire back area is pretty much one big room, with a little area behind a wall in the back that doubles as the prep area and office. There is no break room or employee bathroom. We do have one bathroom at the front for customers, right next to the pop cooler by the entrance to the kitchen. Now that you know a little bit about how the restaurant looks and runs, I'll move on to why it isn't a good place to work at the best of times. First off, I'm one of only five people that work there. My boss and two of my other employees are contract workers from India, so English isn't their first language. They never talk in English when it's just me and them, so I'm always a little bit out of the loop. My other coworker works only part-time since she's still in high school. So with her there only a few hours a week, I spend a majority of my time working without talking too much to my other coworkers. It can get pretty lonely. Now a little bit about me. I just turned 20. I'm a smaller frame female and I live about 10 minutes away from my work. That's 10 minutes walking one way. I don't have my license or a car. This typically doesn't bother me, but it does get kind of scary when I'm walking home in the dark after midnight. Thankfully, the walk to my house is in a pretty good part of town. I've yet to run into any real issues. Other than the language barrier between me and most of my coworkers, the only real problem comes from the night shifts. Since one person is fully capable of doing all the closing duties, I'm left there by myself from 8pm onwards. This means I have to answer the phones, help the customers, and make all the orders. It's not usually busy, so I never have a problem with that, unless there's the odd time where I get 4 or 5 orders at once. But I am really fast at making pizzas, I can usually get them made and in the oven within a minute and a half of the order being taken. The real problem with being alone on closing shifts explains it within this very sentence. I'm there all alone. It can be kind of spooky sometimes if there's someone weird that comes in. Anyone could rob me or hurt me and there would be no one there to help. I've talked to my boss about my concerns but he always dismisses me saying, I'm a phone call away if you need help. We should not have to pay a second person to do your job. Jerk. Last night I worked my usual clothes. Since it was Sunday I only had to stay until 11 but it felt like I was there for hours more. Last night. My fears of what would happen when I was all alone came true. My shift went normally for half the day. By the time 8 o'clock rolled around, I had said goodbye to my morning crew and had already started on the closing checklist. Weird stuff started happening around 9.30. I was making dough in the back, taking my time with it since there was not much else to do. I heard the beep beep of the doorbell and automatically I spun around, looking up at the TV displaying real-time footage of the front lobby. I stared at it for a few seconds, confused. The front was empty, and I could not see anyone out the windows outside. Convinced I had imagined it, I carried on with my dough. I greased and oiled five more pans, finishing the stack. I stacked them on top of each other and picked them up, turning around to check the cameras again before I carried the dough into the walk-in cooler. My heart leaped painfully into my chest and I fumbled with the stack, nearly dropping them all on the floor. A man was standing in the lobby, peering into the kitchen. At once I set the pans down, wiping my hands on my apron before I ran out to greet him. He had shocked me, but I got over it quickly. 
I figured he must have been standing in the blind spot last time I checked the camera. The spot where I used to hide when taking extra breaks so my boss couldn't see what I was doing. Hi there. I called out as I walked over. Sorry about that. I didn't see you come in. What would you like to order? I didn't see you come in. The man repeated my words. I didn't see you come in. I stood there for a second not knowing what to say. I was getting a really bad vibe from this guy and as he spoke it got worse. I tried to ignore it, convincing myself with little success that I was being silly. The man looked average enough despite being very dirty. He was very tall and looked older than my dad, but he was dressed strangely. He was wearing a shiny light blue dress shirt tucked into gray stained sweatpants. His sweatpants were tucked into his socks. His hair was greasy and combed to the side. His pockets were stuffed with what appeared to be all the mints I had in the jar near the menus. He smelled like he hadn't taken a shower in weeks. Can I take your order? I asked again, but my voice lacked questioning. It sounded more like a timid statement and I wondered what this guy's problem was. It took a long time but he finally ordered a small pepperoni pizza with eight boneless wings. I rang his order in quickly, happy he had finally said something. I couldn't help notice the way his mouth moved when he talked. It just went straight up and down like a doll. He didn't have any teeth and his breath nearly made me gag. I'll have your order ready in 10 minutes. I said, placing his change on the table. I thanked him again and walked into the kitchen, wishing there was a door instead of an empty frame leading into the kitchen. I didn't want him to get curious and look in again. I went into the walk-in, grabbing a small pan to make his pizza. Before I got started on it, I checked the camera again, feeling a little better when I saw the man sitting at the bar table, reading what looked like a menu from the front counter. Convinced he was just not all there and most likely homeless, I ignored my gut feeling that something was wrong and prepared his order. I had the pizza in the oven in under 30 seconds. I dropped his wings in a basket and set the timer on the fryer. Six minutes to kill before they're ready. I took this as an opportunity to check my phone. I picked it up just in time. I was receiving a call from my friend Lana. Hey. I said into the phone. You caught me just as I'm taking a few minutes break. What's up? Hurry up and be done with work. Lana cried, sounding irritated. I'm so bored. One more hour. I said after glancing at the clock. 10 p.m. I was startled by this. It felt like I had just looked at the clock. Half an hour had gone by since the man had come in. Lena, you should walk over and pick me up. I said in a low voice. There's a weirdo here and he's giving me the creeps. Are you alone again? Lana asked, sounding concerned. I tried to talk to my boss again, but he never does anything. Anyways, I'll see you in a bit. I hung up the phone just as the fryer started to beep. The wings were done. I threw my phone in my bag and walked around the corner to the main part of the kitchen. I sauced the wings and cut the pizza carrying the order to the front while looking forward to seeing the man leave. I looked around and felt my knees grow weak again. The front was empty. The stool the man had been sitting on was jutted out. The menu he was reading was on the ground. This completely freaked me out. I hadn't heard the doorbell so he couldn't have left. My eyes drifted over to the bathroom door. The handle's button was horizontal, meaning it was locked from the inside. This made me feel a little better. He was just in the bathroom. There's nothing wrong with that. I stood at the till, aimlessly looking through stuff as I waited for him to come out so I could give him his order. I looked down at the bottom of the screen at the time. 10.15 p.m. 10.21 p.m. 10.34 p.m. He had been in there for a good half hour before I mustered the courage to knock on the door. Everything all right in there? I called out. At once I could hear shuffling as if I had startled him. I backed up, preparing for him to come out. The shuffling then stopped, but he still didn't open the door. I walked closer again, raising my fist to bang on the door again, when I heard a click. The door had unlocked. 10.40 p.m. I was at a loss for what to do. I had grown very paranoid and I now knew something was wrong, but at the same time I couldn't just stand there and wait for something to happen. It was 20 minutes to close and I still had a few things to do. I braced myself to open the door and deal with it when I heard him whispering, One more hour. One more hour. I jumped back like I had been burned. He was recycling my words again from earlier when I was on the phone. 
but I was in the back of the kitchen behind the wall. There's no way he could have heard me unless he had crept back there and listened in. I backed away from the door and grabbed my phone, dialing my boss's number. My hands shook as I struggled to press the buttons. Bright lights suddenly distracted me and I looked up to see a car pulling into the parking lot. I thanked my lucky stars as two people got out and walked towards the restaurant holding hands. However, seconds before they could open the door, the bathroom door creaked open. My heart pounded as I looked over, not sure what I should prepare myself to see. The man looked the same as before except covered in sweat and he was panting like a dog. His hair was sticking up everywhere like he was pulling on it. The couple walked in looking curiously at the giant menu a few feet over my head. As I turned to look at them, the man suddenly leaped forward, making me scream and jump back. But he didn't touch me. He grabbed his order sitting on the counter and then bolted out. And I mean bolted. He ran like someone was trying to kill him, across the highway and into the neighborhood beyond. The relief I felt when he was finally gone was explainable. I was nearly laughing when I took the customer's orders, so dizzy I could hardly keep it together. I rang in what they wanted and raced to the back to prepare my last order of the night. 10.52 PM With the customers in the front, I felt comfortable enough to look out the windows and make sure the man had not returned. It was dark but I could see enough and after a few good minutes of checking things out, I decided it was safe to say he was gone for good. I was also starting to wonder where Lana was, and I'd hoped she hadn't run into this creep. 10.57 PM I brought out the customer's order and they thanked me, leaving me no tip but I wasn't expecting one after they saw me scream as the man grabbed his order. As soon as they drove away, I turned off the open sign and raced to the back to grab my things. I put my jacket on and went to the back area to turn off the computer system, realizing I forgot to check the bathroom to make sure the man hadn't done anything weird in there. I dismissed the thought. I wasn't going to spend any more time here than absolutely needed. I've had enough for today. The computer made a few beeping sounds as the entire system shut down, and the light above me went out like it was supposed to. The only thing on now was the security camera, and I glanced up at it hoping to see Lana walking over. Something bothered me about what I saw. The front was empty and dark, but I could still see the shapes and shadows of things. There was no one inside but me. I used the master switchboard next to the computer to turn the front light on, and I nearly had a heart attack. The man was standing outside the door, not moving and staring in through the glass. It's hard for me to remember everything that happened next. All I can recall is running into the walk-in cooler and locking myself in as I called the police for my cell phone. I remember crying as I tried to recall to them what exactly had happened. They drove me home and promised to keep a lookout for him, but that didn't make me feel much better. I felt like they didn't entirely believe me, but I was sort of expecting that. I went to work early the next morning, still terribly paranoid even though it was the middle of the day with lots of people around. I was going to tell my boss I couldn't work nights anymore, starting now. There's no way I'd put myself through that again. I opened the door and my coworker gave me a grim look, looking not at all pleased as he motioned for me to look over at the bathroom door. It was covered in caution tape with a giant sign that read out of order. I asked everyone I worked with what happened in there, but no one gave me a straight answer. I got the most information out of my boss, who talked to me for a long time today about the other night's events. He ended up looking over the security footage from when the man was in the restaurant and went over with me what he saw. He told me he watched the man sneak into the back when I was on the phone, getting very close to me. He said if I had done so much as turn around, I would have saw him. I was told there had been paper towels stuffed into the toilet, the entire roll by the sounds of it. The cardboard cylinder was found stepped on on the floor. I didn't see anything too strange about this and I asked why everyone was being so quiet about it. I was told afterwards that there had been blood covering the paper towels. There was also a smeared bloody handprint on the toilet seat. I don't know what to make of this. I don't understand where the blood came from. Lana finally made contact with me. It's not the kind of contact I was hoping for, but at least it's something for now. I got a text from her a little over half an hour ago. It read, sorry I missed your call. I don't like that text. It doesn't sound like her. Lana's the type of girl that uses exclamation points in every message and always uses proper grammar and capitalization. That aside, I just think it's a weird thing to say. 
I called her tons of times, not just one call. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I'm getting so paranoid I can't help it. I'm walking to her house after I write this. I really hope it's just paranoia making me so worried.